Hello and welcome to this video. So now we have a candle plot, we can get started with actually doing some analysis. And I thought a good place to start would be with one of the simplest indicators in Forex, one that lots and lots of people use. Whether I agree with it is another question, we'll find out, and it's the moving averages. So I'm making a fresh start in this notebook just to make sure everything's okay. I'm just going to execute the first four cells, and I'll make with escape B just some space here. Good, okay. So the first thing is, when we calculate the moving average, we're going to do it on the close price of the mid prices. If we think about the amount of data that we have in our DF, we actually have obviously a lot more information there. Now to make it easier to visualize the data and work with it, we're going to remove some of the columns here. Or rather we're going to make a new data frame that is a copy of this DF, just with fewer columns. And the way we can do that is we can say our new data frame, underscore MA, is equal to our existing data frame. We'll give it a list of columns that we'd like to take, which is time and then the mid prices, and make a copy of this. And now underneath, if I type df underscore ma dot head, we get the first five rows and we can see that we've got our smaller data frame. So let's add the eight period moving average to the mid close price. Before we do that, I want to make one tiny point about syntax and columns in a data frame. Let's say I just want to print the list of the mid O prices to the screen. I can type df underscore ma dot mid o and I get the first and last five of them and three dots to tell me there are lots of them with some information here. I can also use a different syntax, I can use the one we're familiar with which is like so. Now for an existing column on a data frame you can use the dot or the square brackets. If you've got a column name with a space in it or some strange symbols that cause problems with the dot operator you'll have to use this version here, but for an existing column you can use the dot generally or this, and I really wouldn't recommend using column names with spaces or strange symbols because it can cause weird problems later on. For a new column, when you're creating a new column, which we're about to see, you have to use this syntax here. So to make our new column, let's do df underscore ma and then the square brackets and ma underscore 8. So our new column will be called ma underscore 8 and we need to set it equal to something. So we'll set it equal to the df underscore ma dot and then the mid close prices dot rolling and now inside rolling we can do all sorts of things and there are lots and lots of options if you go and look at the pandas documentation what we want is window and we're going to set that to eight so we're going to say that we're going to calculate something based on the mid c values and it's going to have a rolling window of eight so the final thing we need to do is to tell pandas what we're calculating in this case it's simply the mean of those values. Shift and enter and that's it. We've calculated our rolling moving average for eight periods. When I go back up and do dfma.head here and we get the first five rows, you'll see that something strange has happened. We get NAN or not a number, so no value inside the column here. When you first see that you might think well something's gone wrong. Well it hasn't because we're calculating the eight period moving average. That means that we can't for the first seven entries in the data frame actually calculate a value. If we wanted to force that value to be the moving average based on just the existing data we would have to put an extra argument into rolling but I don't want to do that. So we're starting from the eighth value in the data frame and onwards which is at index seven here as you can see and we get moving average values. Now often when you're doing your analysis with data frames you'll want to get rid of this NAN. And the good news is, just like uh, the moving average calculation, this is really simple in pandas, and a lot of stuff is because all these problems have been seen before. This is what pandas is for. We can do df underscore ma dot drop na, and that now gives us the data frame without our not a number values. And now we'll see something strange. If I go back up and I just run this head again, except just on the first five rows this time, you'll see that our data frame has now got these NAN values back. I've just, just done head here. And we run this down here and we saw the data frame now starts from 7, yet when I run head again, it now starts again from 0. And that's got nothing to do with the order that these cells are in the notebook. If I just go below here and execute this, you can see we've still got 0 here. So the question here then, let me just delete this, the question here is what's going on? Well it's a little bit of a tricky thing in notebooks. If I just cut this out, imagine I type 5 plus 4. The notebook interprets this statement and gives me whatever output this gives me, which is 9, 5 plus 4. Now, when we do this, dfma drop n dot drop na, we're show, seeing in the output the result of executing this. We're not actually doing anything to the data frame. As far as Python is concerned, we've made a statement saying, please print me the result of drop na. And the result is to give you back a data frame without the na values. But we're not storing that data frame anywhere. So to do that, there are two ways we can do it. One is to type df ma is equal to this. 
But a better way to do it and shorter way is you'll find with most pandas functions, they come with an argument called in place and you can set that to true. By default, it's always false. And now it will have modified our data frame. If I go back up here and just execute again, you can see that we're now starting from row seven. So we can be confident now we have a data frame with no NA values. And that's good. That means we've calculated in two lines of code the rolling average for our window of eight. So the last thing I'd like to do in the video then is just plot that onto our candle chart. So df plot down here at the moment is taking our original data frame. We'll change that to df underscore, oops, df underscore ma. So we're getting the first or the last hundred candles of our moving average data frame. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add a trace underneath this figure add trace here. We're going to add a new one and this time it's going to be a scatter. Now to save time, I'm going to paste this in. Of course, the code is on GitHub, but it's fairly straightforward. We're adding another trace. It's not a candlestick trace. This time it's what's known as a scatter. This will give us a line or give us dots, depending on what we specify in the options. The X values then are the, uh, the time. The Y value, I'll put this on a new line so it's easier to see, is the MA8 column. The line then is going to have a color that I've just decided looks maybe a little bit nicer than default. Spline means we're going to make it slightly smooth so it's nice and curved and not jagged between the points. And name MA8, well, we'll just give it this name so we see in the legend the name of the line. So I'll just execute that. And now you can see that we've got a plot and we have our eight period moving average on top of our candle plot. So that's it then for this video. We've come quite a long way. Uh, we can already, with very, very little code really, get ourselves a nice candlestick plot with moving averages calculated and plotting on them. So more analysis then coming up in the next video. And until then, thanks very much for watching and see you in that one.